And now to our feature interview. As you may already know, the British Council was established in 1934, but has been established in Nigeria since 1943, present in at least 16 cities, with three of Africa's 15 largest urban areas being present in Nigeria. You may know the British Council mainly for education, especially in the UK, and for the creative arts, but there's a lot more they're doing in Nigeria, as we will soon hear from the Chief Executive, Scott MacDonald, who paid a brief visit to Nigeria a couple of weeks ago. This is Scott MacDonald. Welcome to Lagos. Thank Welcome you. to Nigeria. So, what do you think? So, my, my main impression is that Nigerians do nothing by half. So, so, everything I have done has been on a big scale with lots of energy, lots of ambition, and I've loved it. I've loved every minute of the week. And why are you here, really? British Council has been operating in Nigeria for 78 years. Um, we've been working, our purpose is to build connections, understanding and trust between the people of Nigeria and the people in the UK. Um, and I've come to see you know, what we're doing on the ground, what we're doing in education, what we're doing in arts and culture, what we're doing our, in our exams and English businesses, see how the team is. I've come to meet partners. Uh, which include our partners across the sectors, lots of people in the government, and I've come to meet the beneficiaries and, and talk to you know, some of the students we have taught or the schools we've worked with, some of the people who've used our programs to get educated and then gone on to be successful in life, or some of the government partners who we've run programs with. So there is a general need for global understanding, and with the way the world is going, um, there is a lot of misunderstanding in the world. How does the British Council help to cut up some of these misunderstandings between Nigeria and the UK? The UK and Nigeria has a long and strong relationship, but, it, but it's had its ups and downs and goods and bads over the years. I mean, the British Council's purpose is actually quite clear. It's in the people-to-people -people relationships. And you know, the people in Nigeria are smart and ambitious and they, they, they're not going to want to work with us unless we can demonstrate that what we do is good for them and good for the people in the UK. So if we're organizing exchanges or other programs, I mean, we're very clear about why it's good for both countries and, and why we need to work in partnership. Government relations go on through time, but they're always quite volatile because the governments in every country have short-term cycles. So, you know, whether it's three, four, or five years, they have policies and the government changes, and then the other country has policies and the government changes, and sometimes you get a nice um, mix and sometimes you don't. The British Council's job is to sort of think long-term and do things that are beneficial for both countries and build long-term trust. So, so the the Nigerian partners we have and the people we work with should think we're always here, we're not short term going like this, we're always thinking about the long term and trying to build relationships um, through the tools we have in education and culture. And I, I think you mentioned you know, the world's a bit volatile right now in, in many places. And I think all that means for us is it's even more important because most of those situations happen when trust breaks down. So if we, the more we can do to build trust, you know, that, that it should contribute to peace and hopefully prosperity. My interview with Mr. McDonald's continues after the break. Please stay with us. Let's get back now to the conclusion of my interview with Mr. McDonald. And there is also a lot of unemployment in the world. I mean, I think even the British economy it has been recording uh, red numbers recently. Um, the unemployment rate is high, even here in Nigeria. How is the British Council also helping with this? Yeah, so I, uh, unemployment is one of the biggest issues in, in Nigeria. And if, if we could make progress, you know, reducing the unemployment, it would probably affect many of the other challenges Nigeria has. They're not the only one. The whole, you know, the whole world is facing similar challenges to some degree. So we try and um, shift a lot of the work we do here in all of the areas I talked about towards filling skills gaps and generating employment directly. So I'll give you a few examples. In our arts and culture work, you know, where we work across all the various arts sectors, whether it's dance or architecture or painting or film, you know, there are many things we could do in terms of connecting and events and, stuff and, and things like that. What we focus a lot on is teaching the practical skills around the creative economy so that people can 
build businesses, employ others, and actually be successful in the, in the, in the business and practicalities of the creative economy. That, that's one example. In our education work, there are all sorts of things we do around employment. But the, the one I really like is we have a project called um, Innovation for African Universities. And it's a grant-funded program by us where we link up universities in, in Nigeria with universities or organizations in the UK. And the whole focus is on innovation and entrepreneurship. So they're supposed to teach people the skills, again, to build businesses and employ other people. Um, and I think, I think for Nigeria, given the sort of energy and ambition, this entrepreneurship focus is incredibly important. So we try and shift all of our programs a little more that way. Well, going back to COVID-19, um, yes, so many organizations were impacted by it around the world. I know that the British, the British economy was greatly impacted by that as well. How has the British Council navigated around COVID and what was the experience? So I think it's very fair to say we've had a really tough couple of years because most of the work we did historically has been face to face whether it's teaching, exams, supporting education, or arts and culture events and convening people. And all of a sudden, we were in a different world. And we should have been faster many years ago with digital you know, solutions and answers. Um, we have been, we've done it now, but we kind of did it in the pandemic. But that meant that all of a sudden, our whole organization was in, in deep trouble because we had to change the way we did everything, like a lot of other people, but it affected our financial model enormously. This happened at a time when you know, governments around the world, including the UK, are under pressure um, on financing because their COVID was expensive and, and we now have a, a cost of living crisis in the UK as well. So our government finances are under pressure as well. So, We've had to manage through that, and we've had to really focus what we do on the things we think are most valuable, and we've had to shrink a little bit as the British Council overall. But I think now we're sort of coming out of that. We're in a pretty good spot. We've got a much better technology-enabled digital platform now. And I feel good about the next couple of years, but it's been a hard couple of years, and our, our people have worked incredibly hard, I think done a nice job. And I know it's been hard for the whole world. It's, it's not just the British Council, but our, our business was particularly affected. But did it affect um, staff employment though? I mean, did you have to let go of some people? Yes, in that whole process, I mean, we have a certain amount of income that comes in from government, from partnerships, and from the, the businesses we run like exams and English. And that whole package shrunk. And like any organization, we had to shrink the, the size of the British Council to align with that income. So we, we, have, we, we are now smaller than we were two years ago. So for many Nigerians, um, education is important. And you know, they have to write the IELTS examinations to be able to get into British schools. But many are wondering why they still have to take the exams when English is a lingua franca in Nigeria. So it's a good question. I, I mean, I, I would say governments universities and professional bodies around the world set the rules about who needs to take exams and for what reasons. The British Council doesn't actually do that. What we do is if, if people are required to take exams, you know, we try and deliver the highest quality exams we can that are recognized, that are run well, that are free from corruption, and that you can trust. And so we do that across the board. We do school exams, we do professional exams, and we do English assessment exams like, like IELTS. Um, I think it's a, fair, it's a fair argument to say, you know, you might want to argue that some of these are unnecessary and if governments around the world change the rules for immigration or universities change the rules for immigration, we will have no more need to do exams. But until they do, you know, our job is to do the best exams we can. So I know that, um, well, to many Nigerians, British Council is synonymous with education, but there's a lot more you do in the country, right? So we really do four or five things. We do um, education, which as you say, you know, and we work through the whole area of education. We do lots of work around arts and culture where we do exchange. And yesterday I was at an event with about 50 of the um, arts and culture people in, in Lagos. From, and they were from every area, theater producers, people who ran hubs and uh, people in architecture and, and people who were painters. Um, and they all 
you know, they use us as a network to meet each other, to link into the UK. We can provide space for them. We can provide training, like I talked around before, around the creative economy. So that's another piece. We do the whole exams piece I mentioned. We do English language teaching, but not so much in, in, in Nigeria. And we also have a stream of work in Nigeria around peace, conflict resolution, and stability that we've done for many years with the support of the UK government and the EU. Um, and we've run various programs there, or delivered various programs for, for the EU in particular. So climate change is another issue right now, and I know that you know everyone seems to be talking about it. Um, what is the British Council saying about this? So um, we try and stay focused at the British Council at the things we're good on, and we're not climate scientists, and we're not you know economists around how you can raise money to 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 support what we need to do against climate change. What we are, though, is experts in you know, how to drive change in ideas through society, which normally happens through education and arts and culture. So what we've tried to do in our traditional education and arts and culture programs is build in a whole layer on climate. So and I think we're already seeing this in the arts world. You know, many, many of the books and movies and, and things that come out now have an element of culture. And so that's our role is to facilitate that. And the same in education, you know, we need to teach all about climate change at an earlier level and it needs to be embedded. That's our role. And then we also have a traditional program within the British Council because we're a global organization and, and we fly around the world and, and we have operations. You know, we're trying to do all the things you need to do to try and keep our own emissions down, which are, we don't actually have that many. Our main one is in flying around the world and I think like every other organization we've really stopped doing that as much. The, the British Council has worked in the justice, conflict and stability space in Nigeria for, for about 20 years. I know that's not your main or your core uh, uh, area of expertise but where does the British Council stand in continuing uh, this role in the sector? So th this is not the core of what we do. So I, the core of what we do is education, arts and culture, and English and exams. And this, the work you're describing is, as I said before, it's work we've done here over a long period with our partners in the EU and UK. And you know, we want to continue doing that work where it's valuable and where it's useful, and particularly where it overlaps in our focus on youth and overlaps with our education and cultural work. You know, some of it, over time we'll have to stop doing because we can't do everything and I think we really do need to focus on what we're good at um, but we always need to we always need to consider what people actually want us to do as well and kind of evolve through time to, to the right things. Finally <laughs> you have been in Nigeria for just a few days um, your takeaways? I think I think it's a combination of there's so much energy and ambition here combined with complexity and challenge. And it, it's a bit overwhelming being from the outside because everyone I meet has huge desires for what they want to do and what they want to accomplish and what can be accomplished. And that's really energizing to see. At the same, at the same time, you see the incredible complexity of the diversity across the country and the complexity of the, of the government and how hard it must be to run this country and some of the, you know, the equality challenges across the country you know, are, are immense. And there's, there is a way through all this, but, it, but it's a, a hard one, I think. Mr. Scott McDonald, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.